Homi Jahangir Baba, born on the 30th of October 1909 into a prominent wealthy Parsi family comprising Jahangir Horamsi Baba, a well-known lawyer, and Merabai Framji Pandey, the granddaughter of Sir Dinsu Manaksi Pitait. He was named Horamsi after his paternal grandfather Horamsi Baba, who was an Inspector General of Education in the Mysore. He received his early studies at the Mumbai's Cathedral and John Connell School. Baba's upbringing insisted in him an appreciation for music, painting and gardening. He often visited his maternal aunt Mirabai Tata, who owned a Western classical music collection which included the works of Beethoven, Mozart, Haydn and Schubert. Baba's tutor in sketching and painting was the artist Jehangir Lalkala. At the 17th, Baba's self-portrait won the second place at the prestigious Bombay Arts Society's exhibition. Baba showed signs of porosity in the sciences. As a child, he spent hours playing at the Meccano sets and was fond of building his own models rather than following the booklets that has accompanied the sets. Baba frequently visited his home of his uncle, Durabji Tata, who was the chairman of the conglomerate Tata Group. He passed his senior Cambridge examination with honours at the age of 15. He was quite young to join any college abroad, so he enrolled in the Alpston College of Bombay. In 1927, he attended the Royal Institute of Science and witnessed a public lecture by Arthur Compton, who would win the Nobel Prize in Physics the next year in 1923 for the discovery of the Compton effect. The following year, he joined the Gunfile Chaos College of the Cambridge University. Dr. Vava has made remarkable contributions to the nuclear physics through his research works, like the first doctoral paper titled The Absorption of Cosmic Radiation Explained the Electron Sour Production and the Absorption Within the Cosmic Rays. In 1936, Bhava published a paper named Passage of Fast Electrons and the Theory of Cosmic Sours. He was also the co-author and worked with a German physicist. He also gave new theories and explanations for electrons in varied altitudes through numerics. Considering his research work in 1851, Bhava was granted a senior studentship this extended his work at the Cambridge University until World War II, which started in the 1939. Baba had returned to India for his annual vacation before the World War II started in September 1939. War prompted him to remain in India where he accepted a post of reader in physics at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore headed by the Nobel laureate C. V. Raman. In 1940, the Tsar Dobzi Tata Trust supported his experimental cosmic ray physics research with a grant. Baba was made a Fellow of Royal Society in the year 1941 and the following year he became the first Indian to receive the Adams Prize. Soon after receiving the Adams Prize, Baba was also made a Fellow to the Indian Academy of Sciences and the President of the Physics Section of the Indian Science Congress while 
introducing him at the 1941 annual meeting of the Indian Academy of Sciences. C.B. Raman described the 32-year-old Baba as the modern equivalent of Leonardo da Vinci. On 20 January 1942, Baba formally accepted professorship and the leadership of the Cosmic Ray Research Unit. As late as 1940, Baba was listing his affiliation as at present at the Department of Physics, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, suggesting that he has viewed his time in India as a temporary period before his return to the UK. In 1941, he wrote to Robert Milligan that he hoped that the war would be over soon so that we can turn again in the most favorable conditions to purely scientific activity. Though he had hoped to work in KTAC, it was impossible for Milligan to invite him there. The restrictions on finance imposed by the war was also made impossible for the Wolfgang Pauli to invite Baba to the Princeton. During his time in Bangalore, Baba met Vikram and Marinalini Saravai as a part of a group in stress in Indian culture and developed an appreciation for the Indian architectural and the artistic heritage on his tours around the country. In 1943, Baba wrote to the J.R.D. Tata proposing the establishment of the Institute of Fundamental Research. In a letter to the astrophysicist Subramanian Chandrasekhar, Baba described that his ambition was to bring together as many outstanding scientists as possible so as to build up in time an intellectual atmosphere approaching what we knew in places like Cambridge and Paris. J.R.D. Tata's enthusiasm encouraged Baba to send a proposal in March 1944 to Sir Saurabh Sarkapta, who was then the chairman of the Sir Dorabji Tata Trust, for establishing a school dedicated to research in the fundamental physics. The trustees of the Sir Dorabji Tata Trust decided to accept Baba's proposal and financial responsibility for starting the institute in the April 1944. In June 1945, with a grant from the Trust, he established the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, TIFR, began functioning in the Cosmic Ray Unit of the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, by October. It had moved to Bombay. TIFR initially operated in the 6,000 square feet of the bungalow where Baba had been born. The institute was moved into the old buildings of the Royal Yacht Club in 1948. In 1962, an art gallery designed the Chicago based firm Holabart and Root architect Helmut Bost was inaugurated at the TIFR. Bombay was chosen as the location as the government of Bombay sought interest in becoming a joint founder of the proposed institute. By 1954, Baba had stopped publishing scientific papers but continued to carry out a range of administrative tasks um, aimed at growing TIFR. Some of the TIFR's research groups focused on nuclear chemistry and metallurgy, which moved to the drum bay to provide the basis for a 1958 plan to integrate the nuclear energy into the national power grid. By 1954, the institute contained an in-house electronics production unit. Under Baba's leadership, the institute established a research group under 
Bermert Peters supervision to conduct the research on the cosmic rays and later geophysics. On 26 April 1948, Bhabha wrote to the Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru that the development of atomic energy should be entrusted to a very small and high-powered body compared to say three people with executive power and answerable directly to the Prime Minister without any intervening link. Burst when to the Atomic Energy Act, the Atomic Energy Commission AEC was established on 10th August 1948. Nehru appointed Bhabha as the commissions of the first chairman. The three member commission included S. S. Bhatnagar, K. S. Krishnan Vava, Bhatnagar and Krishnan were also named as the scientific advisory committee to the Ministry of Defense which was created in the July 1948. When Bhava realized that the technology development for the atomic energy program could no longer be carried out within the TIFR, he proposed to the government to build a new laboratory entirely devoted to the purpose. For this purpose, 1200 acres of land was acquired at the Trombe from the Bombay government. The Atomic Energy Establishment Trombe started functioning in the year 1954. The same year, Bhabha was appointed as the Secretary of the Department of Atomic Energy DAE, under the direct charge of the Prime Minister Atomic Energy was established as a separate ministry. In the 1957 paper in the nature summarizing the Indian nuclear energy program's ambitions and work, Bhabha claimed that although the Atomic Energy Commission was established as an advisory body in 1948 in the Ministry of Natural Resources and Scientific Research, no important effort to develop his work was made until a separate department of the government of India with the full powers of a ministry was established in August 1954. At the DAE, Bhabha maintained relative autonomy over priority setting and throughout the 1950s and early 1960s, nuclear policy remained little discussed in the parliament and in public life. Bhabha is created the formulating strategy of focusing on the extracting power from the country's vast thorium reserves rather than its merged uranium reserves. He presented this plan to the Conference of the Development of Atomic Energy for the Peaceful Purposes in the New Delhi in November 1954. The thorium focus strategy stood in the marked contrast to all the other countries in the world. It became formally adopted by the Indian government in the 1958 as the India's three-stage nuclear power program. In 1952, Indian Rare Arts Limited, a government-owned company, was established to extract the rare arts and the thoriums from Kerala's Monsite Sands, with Vava serving as its director. In August 1956, the 1 MW swimming pool research reactor Apsara was commissioned, making India the first Asian country besides the Soviet Union to have a nuclear reactor. Running on an enriched natural uranium fuel supplied by the United Kingdom Atomic Energy Commission and Thorium, Apsara represented the first stage of Bhabha's plan. Bhabha was able to secure favorable terms for India party due to the friendship with Sir John Crockcroft, who had been his colleague at the Cavendish Laboratory in the Cambridge. That year, India and Canada 
signed an agreement for the construction of a natural uranium heavy water moderated national research experimental reactor in the Trombe. In July 1958, Bhava decided to build a plutonium reprocessing plant in Trombe. Construction of the Phoenix plant based on the Purex technique for extracting plutonium from the spent fuel began in 1961, was completed in the mid-1964. In the 1950s, Bahaba represented India in the International Atomic Energy Agency conferences and served as the President of the United Nations Conference on the Peaceful Uses of Atomic Energy in the Geneva, Switzerland in 1955. According to the IAES 10th September 1956 draft statue, plutonium and other special fissionable materials would be deposited with the agency, which would have been the discussion to provide states with the quantities deemed suitable for the non-military use under safeguards. Baba successfully lobbied against the agency's broad authority arguing in 27 September 1956 conference that it was inalienable rights of the states to produce and hold the feasible material required for the peaceful power programs. In December 1959, in light of concerns about the possible Chinese nuclear weapons program, Baba claimed to be the Parliamentary Consultative Committee on Atomic Energy that India's nuclear energy research had progressed to the point where it could have built nuclear weapons without external aid. In 1960, in a meeting with the Nehru at the Canals Nichols, who was visiting India as a consultant of the West Goss, Bhaba estimated that it would take India about a year to build a nuclear bomb. In 1964, U.S. State Department Bureau of Intelligence and Research report concluded that although there was no direct evidence of the Indian nuclear weapons program and that it was unlikely that India had made a decision to pursue weapons capability, it was probably no accident that everything that Indians done so far would be compatible with the weapons program at some future date it would appear to desirable to start one. In a 2006 interview, P.K. Iyanar, a former chairman of the AEC, was asked whether Vava was keen on India becoming a nuclear weapon state. In response, Iyanar stated that Dr. Vava had it in his mind from the very beginning that India should become a nuclear weapon state. His emphasis on self-reliance is essentially due to the fact that he wanted India to be the nuclear weapons country. After the Chinese nuclear test on 16th of October 1964, Baba began to publicly call for the building of nuclear explosives. On the other hand, Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Sastri, Nehru's successor, sought security guarantees from the existing nuclear powers. While declaring at the Cairo Conference of Non-Allied Nation that India's nuclear establishment was under firm orders not to make a single experiment, not to perfect a single device which is not needed for peaceful uses of atomic energy. On a visit to London on the 4th of October 1964, anticipating the Chinese test, Baba said that India could conduct a nuclear test within a year and half decision to do so, but he did not think such a decision will be taken. A 28 October 1964 Indian Express survey found that the public opinion leaders across India now took for granted Bahabur's claim that India could develop a nuclear bomb within a year or a half. Yet this figure was slightly an overestimate. In 1966, Raja Ramana, the physicist talks in 1965 with directing the nuclear weapons project, said, 
I don't think it would have been possible to do what Vava said to build a device in 18 months. A crash program could have been done, I suppose, but it would have been very expensive. By 1965, Bhabha had updated his estimate from the 8 months to at least 5 years. At 29 October 1964, US Embassy cable cited an informed source from the Indian Ministry of External Affairs saying that the pressures from the government of India for India to develop its own boom were building up and that Baba was leading advocate for his group and he was actively campaigning to go down near nuclear the road. The reputed disastrous policy preferences who as a Gandhian sued a strong moral revulsion to building nuclear weapons but did not wish to increase the defense spending during the nation's ongoing food crisis. Sastri sought British assistance in making more objective cost estimates. In November 1964, All India Congress Committee meeting, he disputed Vava's numbers, argued that the production of the single nuclear bomb would cost rupees 400 to 500 million, more than 200 times Vava's estimate. In a remark likely aimed at the Vava's All India radio broadcast, after Sastri's address, Baba clarified that his figures came from an American study on the peaceful uses of atomic explosions for civil engineering projects but maintained that nuclear explosive power could be cost effective. On 23rd and 24th November 1964, when the Lok Sabha met to discuss the India's foreign policy, speakers generally assumed that the Baba's eight-month lifeline for building a nuclear bomb was more accurate. Did not suggest that a Soviet or a used nuclear umbrella would extend over India in case of nuclear bomb. Sastri's announcement of a program to develop the peaceful nuclear explosives fell short of the sanctioning and explicit nuclear weapons program. However, to intend it for different purposes, the two kind of devices are technically similar. Speaking to the Press Trust of the India in 1997, Raja Ramana said that the Pokhran test was a bomb. And I can tell you now, an explosion is an explosion and a gun is a gun. Whether you shoot at someone or shoot at the ground, I just want to make clear that the test was not at all peaceful. Ramana speculated that the Sastri's endorsement of peaceful nuclear explosive research must have come from Baba. In an interview with the scholar George Pokrips in 1997, Homi Setna, a former of AEC's chairman, agreed that the Baba had prompted his statement. The concession apparently did win Baba's alignment. After the 1965 Indo-Pakistani war, pressure to build the nuclear weapons intensified as the threat from the Pakistan introduced a new security concerns. After realizing that the 18-month timeline for building nuclear weapons capability was too ambitious, Baba had several meetings with the US officials in the secret between 1964 and 1965. In this, he explored the option of importing nuclear explosive capacity. However, with the emergence of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, this option eventually closed. After Bhava's death, dissatisfied with the NPT's refusal to meet India's security concerns, scientists at the Bhava Atomic Research Center, Bar and the Defense Research Development Organization DRTU, began work on the nuclear device used in 1974 Pokhran test. Baba was a wheat painter decorating his house with abstracts. He painted during the 1930s in England. 
He was a key patron of the Progressive Artist Group, formed in Bombay in 1947 to establish new ways of expressing India's post-colonial identity. Bhava's doctoral thesis won him the Adams Prize in 1942, making him the first Indian to receive the honor. This was followed by the Hopkins Prize by the Cambridge Philosophical Society in 1948. He also gained international prominence after deriving a correct expression for the probability of scattering positrons by the electrons, a process now known as the Pava scattering. His major contributions included work on the Crompton scattering R process and the advancement of the nuclear physics. He was also nominated for the Nobel Prize for Physics in the year 1951 and 1953 to 1956. Later, he was awarded the Padma Bhushan, India's third highest civilian honor in 1954. In 1959 and 1957, he was elected an honorary fellow of John Feely and K.S. College and of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. He was elected a Foreign Honorary Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1958 and also appointed the President of the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics from 1960 to 1963. Bhabha received several honorary doctoral degrees in science throughout his career in Patna 1944, Lucknow 1949, Banaras 1950, Agra 1952, Perth 1954, Allahabad 1958, Cambridge 1950, London 1960 and Padova 1961. Baba died when Air India flight 101 crashed near Mont Blanc on 24th January 1966. A misunderstanding between Geneva Airport and the pilot about the aircraft position near the mountains was the official reason of the crash. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi said in a ceremony mourning his death. Do lose Dr. Homi Bhabha at a crucial moment in the development of our atomic energy program is a terrible blow for our nation. He had his most creative years ahead of him. When we take up the unfinished work he has left behind, we will realize in how many fields he has served us. For me, it is a personal loss and I shall miss his wide-ranging mind and many talents. His determination to strengthen our country's science and enthusiastic interest in life's many facets, we mourn a great son of India. Many possible theories have also been advanced for the egg crash, including a claim that the Central Intelligence Agency CIA was involved in paralyzing India's nuclear program. An Indian diplomatic pack containing calendars and a personal letters was also recovered near the crash site in 2012. Gregory Douglas, a journalist conspiracy theorist for Gr and Holger Steiner, also claimed to have conducted telephone conversation with the former CIA operative Robert Crowley in 1993, published a book titled Conversations with the Crow in 2013. According to the Douglas Crowley, claimed that the CIA was responsible for assassinating Homi Bhabha and Prime Minister Sastri in 1966. 13 days apart to drop India's nuclear program, Douglas asserted that the Crowley told him a bomb in the cargo section of the plane exploded mid-air bringing down the commercial Boeing 707 airline in the Alps with the new traces. Despite that, Baba is considered as the father of the Indian nuclear program and one of the most prominent scientists in the country's history. After his death, the Atomic Energy Establishment at the Mumbai was renamed as the Bhabha Atomic Research Center in his honor. The 1967 TIFR 
showcased, which were later moved to DIFR's auditorium flyover. The auditorium was named the Homi Bhabha Auditorium. Bhabha encouraged the research in electronics, space science, microbiology, and radio astronomy. The radio telescope in OT, India, was one of the world's largest steerable telescope and was built at Bhabha's initiative in 1970. A number of research institutes received the initial funding from the Department of Atomic Energy under Bhabha's supervision, including the Tata Memorial Hospital, the Indian Cancer Research Center, the Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics, the Physical Research Laboratory in Ahmedabad. The Homi Bhava Fellowship Council has been giving Homi's Bhava Fellowship since 1967. Other noted institutions in his name are the Homi Bhava National Institute at the Indian Dim University, Homi Bhava Center for Science Education, Mumbai, India. At Bhava's death, his estate, including Mehangi, the sprawling colonial bungalow at the Malabar Hill, he spent most of his life was inherited by his brother Jamshed Baba. Jamshed, an avid patron of arts and culture, bequeathed the bungalow with its constant to the National Center for the Performing Arts, which was auctioned for the property of Rs 372 crores in 2014. Today, the Baba is regarded as the father of India's nuclear program. Dr. Vabas developed India's nuclear weapons, strengthening the country's political position among the developed countries. Long live Baba!